In this tutorial, I will share with you my approach to preparing a voiceover for a YouTube video using free version of DaVinci Resolve 18.6. Begin with setting up DaVinci Resolve for audio recording. Switch to the Fairlight page. Go to DaVinci Resolve Preferences. Select Video and Audio Input Output and make sure the audio input and output devices are configured correctly. Since only one microphone is used in my case, I create a new mono audio track. Mono sound is limited to just one audio channel. Rename your audio track to voice recording for better visual navigation. On the right hand side in the mixer panel, find the index of your audio track. Click on the No Input button and choose Input. In the Page Input Output window, select your microphone under Source Audio Inputs and choose the Voice Recording Audio Track under Destination Track Input. Click the Page button. To activate the recording function for your audio track, find your audio track in the Mixer panel. Then click on the Tiny R button. You can also find this button on the left hand side. Before you start recording, Double-click on the square next to the pen title to turn off the pen switch. If you don't do this, when you export your audio, in some cases it can be roughly 3dB quieter than what you hear in DaVinci Resolve. Additionally, while editing my projects, I ensure to turn off the pen feature for other audio tracks, such as background music or sound effects. This helps maintain consistent audio loudness between the audio inside DaVinci Resolve and the audio exported from DaVinci Resolve. To begin and end recording, click on the record and stop button. When you start recording, you may notice a delayed playback of everything you recorded, repeating in your speakers or headphones. To eliminate this, go to the Fairlight menu, select Input Monitor Style and choose the Mute option. So let's record a few audio chunks. Remove the silent areas from your recordings to make them look clean and professional. Now let's proceed with audio normalization. Audio normalization adjusts the overall volume of an audio recording to a target level, ensuring consistency within a single track or across multiple audio chunks. Select your audio recordings, right-click and choose Normalize audio levels. In the pop-up window, choose a YouTube preset and set the level to Independent. For the YouTube preset, the target loudness is limited to minus 14 LKFS and the target level to no more than minus 1 dB. Later in the tutorial, you will encounter another acronym LUFS or LUFS, which is essentially the same as LKFS, measuring how loud your audio sounds and how pleasant it is to listen to. The next step is to set up visual indicators for better understanding of audio loudness. Go to the loudness panel, click on the three horizontal dots and choose the YouTube preset. Ensure that the resume button is clicked and the absolute scale function is turned on. Also activate the lock metering to transport function, which automatically resets the integrated audio loudness value when transitioning between audio chunks. Now we need to focus on two main target level parameters, true peak and integrated loudness, which correspond to the target level and target loudness of a YouTube preset. True peak measurement is crucial in audio engineering for accurately assessing and controlling the peak levels of digital audio signals. It helps prevent distortion, ensures compliance with broadcasting standards and maintains high quality audio throughout the production and delivery chain. Integrated loudness provides a uniform way to measure the average loudness of audio content, helping to maintain consistent loudness levels for broadcast and multimedia distribution. The true peak value from the control room panel must not exceed minus 1 dB and the integrated value from the loudness panel must not exceed minus 14 LUFs. To proceed further, solo your voice recording audio track by clicking on the S button. This will help us record the voice independently without the cumulative loudness impact of other audio tracks. Now we need to set the true peak value which should not exceed minus 1 dB. To do this, go to the Effects tab in the top left corner and choose a limiter effect. Apply it to the bus 1 track. Effects applied to the bus 1 track will affect all tracks in your project. Set the limiter ceiling property to minus 1 dB to match our true peak target value. After setting the true peak to minus 1 dB, we are able to cut off all project audio peaks that exceed this limit. Moving forward, 
The last step is to adjust the loudness of audio chunks to make them close to minus 14 laughs. To measure audio loudness, move the playhead to the beginning of your audio chunk. Click on the play button and wait until it reaches the end. Now your measurements are ready. By using the calculated, integrated and true peak values, we can understand how close our audio loudness is to the target parameters. Select your audio chunk and on the right hand side in the audio tab, adjust its volume to match the integrated loudness level of minus 14 laughs. Apply the same process to all chunks of the audio voice recording. Your audio track has been normalized. Take into account that I shared with you the process of how to normalize a single voice recording audio track based on the separated chunks of voice recording. For projects with two or more stacked audio tracks, you should first focus on normalizing the audio tracks that are most dependent on sound loudness, such as voice recordings. Normalize each track separately using the track solo button as demonstrated earlier. Once the audio tracks in your project that rely heavily on sound loudness have been normalized separately, you can unsolo them and make all playable to begin audio normalization for the entire project by adjusting the loudness of each individual track as needed. The next step is removing noise from voice recordings. If your voice recording contains background noise, you can use the noise reduction effect to address it. Click on the top left effects button and drag the noise reduction effect onto your bus 1 track. Activate auto speech mode. If you accidentally close the noise reduction settings window, you can access it by selecting the bus 1 track, then go to the effects tab on the right side and click on the custom button of the noise reduction effect. Audio effects applied to the bus 1 track will affect all audio tracks in your project. If you want to apply an effect to a specific audio track or segment, apply it directly to the track or segment, instead of to the bus 1 track. Next, I will demonstrate a possible solution to deal with pop or puff noises. It may happen when your voice recording is done by placing the microphone too close to your mouth. Additionally, the lack of a pop filter for a microphone can cause the same problem. To address this, apply a vocal channel effect to a bus 1 audio track and activate its high pass feature. By adjusting the frequency setting, you can minimize or completely eliminate the unwanted noise. The final step is clearing unused recordings. After recording a voiceover for a project, you may end up with unused files that occupy space on your storage drive. To remove them automatically, go to the Edit tab and click on the top left Media Pool button. Then click on the three horizontal dots and choose the Remove Unused Clips feature. Then click on the Load All Timelines button. Use this feature with caution, as it removes all unused files from your project regardless of the media format. Ensure that all required project files are placed on the tracks before using the Remove Unused Clips feature. 